So this past weekend at the Windsor at Celebration, we had a uh, sermon uh, that was entitled The Way Home, and it was uh, for the seniors. And I, I enjoyed being able to talk to them a little bit about this whole idea about uh, going home. You know, Jesus in John 14, let me read it for you. Jesus in John 14 said this, he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's home are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And where I am, you will be also. And you know the way I'm going. So what I, what I shared this last weekend at the Windsor was that the first question is, well, why are the apostles troubled? Jesus starts off by saying, let not your hearts be troubled. Well, there was good reason for them to be troubled. There was, in fact, there were two primary reasons. One, Jesus had been not only telling them that he was going away, but he told them he was going to be handed over to the Jews, the religious leaders, and he would be crucified. He would die, but he would rise again. In fact, in Mark 9.31, it says this, the Son of Man, this is Jesus talking, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. So there's, there's good reasons for them to be concerned. But one of the other reasons they were concerned is because this, this idea of the resurrection, of, of rising again. Remember, nobody had been risen from the dead. Lazarus had come out of the grave, but he still had a mortal body. Uh, the, there was a belief in the resurrection that was a little bit uncertain at the time of the apostles. There was two groups of people, you probably remember. There were the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The, Sar the Sadducees were the aristocrats. There was, they were the majority of the Sanhedrin. They were wealthy people that were friends of the Romans. They also didn't believe in a resurrection. The Pharisees, on the other hand, believed in 631 rules that they had to follow but they did believe in the resurrection of the dead. So the apostles were uncertain who was going to, who was right? Were the Pharisees right or possibly were the Sadducees right? Well, Jesus gives the apostles three reasons not to, not to fear. And I think the first reason was is that he said, in my father's house are many rooms. You know, in some of your Bible translations, if you have the King James, it said, in, in, my, in, my, in my father's home are many mansions, or mansions. The, the word mans is a Greek word, mane. It's translated as mans because back in the 16th, 17th century, uh, a mans, a mans was a dwelling place, a room. So this is the idea, in, in, in the father's house are many rooms. This is the father's house, it's not the father's hotel. Jesus is inviting people to, to share a room with them. You know, you've probably had many guests in your house, and my guess is that the people that are guests in your house are friends. They're friends and they're neighbors, they're, they're people that are, that are close to you, most likely your relatives. Strangers don't get to stay in your house. Jesus is in, in, in inviting the apostles to stay in his Father's house because they're, they're friends, they're brothers and sisters of Christ. The second thing he says is that Jesus will prepare a place for us. Now, I have fun with this because I talk a little bit about the way that my wife and I are different in preparing a place. You know, I think I don't want to be a sexist about this, but guys are different than gals when it talks about preparing. I can, I can prepare for family or people coming over to my house in about 15 minutes. All I have to do is kind of find a couple closets and vroom, everything goes in the closets, everything comes off the shelves and we're ready for company. My wife is not like that. She cleans. She, she picks things up and she cleans them and she cleans the space underneath them as well. Was well, this what Jesus was talking about, that he needed to clean up heaven? No, I don't think that's it. There are actually two things, and this is very important, two things that Jesus had to do. Number one, sin had to be atoned for. You see, there had been this open house, this open, rooms available, if you have it, um, in heaven for, for thousands of years. But heaven was unoccupied. The only people that had been to heaven were the angels and, and Jesus himself. Heaven was unoccupied. Nobody was worthy. So sin had to be atoned for. The Bible says that, Je that Jesus would take the wrath of God on the cross, that the, the fury of God would be poured out, that, that Jesus would pay for the sins of the world. And that's what he would have to do. But the other thing was that, had to be, that death had, been, had to be defeated. You see, nobody had risen from the dead yet. Jesus was going to rise from the dead and death would be defeated. Uh, the Bible says, death, where is your sting? There's no longer any sting of death. In fact, Jesus promised that if we believe in him, 
that we'll have life everlasting, that we'll no longer die, we will, we will live. So this idea of being transported to heaven is a, an assurance that Jesus gives. Now the thing I want you to remember is that Jesus says that he'll come and take us to himself. Jesus will personally return to bring us home. That's the third reason. Jesus will personally come and take us home. Now the question is, has that happened yet? No, it hasn't. That happens basically at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this is what, this is what the Apostle Paul says. Paul says, and this is out of 1 Thessalonians, he says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, even so them also which sleep in Jesus with, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, that's the second coming of the Lord, shall not pre pre uh, prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, brothers and sisters, this is a great hope. Jesus said that we are not to be alarmed, we are not to be afraid, we are not to be troubled, that Jesus was going to go and prepare a place for us, that in his Father's house were in many rooms, and that Jesus personally would take us home. What a great hope we have that Jesus will take us home. I know there's been times when my, my children uh, were a little bit further away from us, five or six feet. It seemed like a long distance for them and all of a sudden they realized their mother or father wasn't there and they were afraid. But we were able to take them by the hand and then bring them back to us and eventually take them home. And that's exactly what God promises for us as well. So God bless, have a great day, we love you.